Hi guys and welcome to the seventh video of this entire series where we are discussing Azure AD Connect concepts. In the last video, we discussed the different types of filtering that can be configured within Azure AD Connect. We discussed how we can filter objects and their attributes using group-based filtering, OU-based filtering, domain-based filtering, and attribute-based filtering. And I have shown you practically how we can configure each type of filtering within Azure AD Connect. In this particular video, I will be showing you how to synchronize objects from Active Directory to Office 365. I will be showing you practically how we can create users and how we can run sync cycles. I will be discussing the types of sync cycles that we can run to synchronize objects. I will be showing you how to check connector space and how to search objects within Metaverse. So first, let me show you how we can synchronize a user object from on-premise Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. Let's create one user account. From my Active Directory, I am synchronizing only test OU. So the user accounts or objects that I'm going to create within this organizational unit, only these objects will be synchronizing to Azure Active Directory. So let's create one user account within this OU. And let's give it a name, for example, synced user one. And let's assign a password for this user. So now we have created a user account. Let's go to PowerShell and let's initiate sync cycles. Sync cycles are of two types, Delta sync and initial sync. Both types of sync cycles can be used to synchronize objects from on-premise to Azure Active Directory. But the difference between these two cycles is Delta Sync cycle synchronizes only the recent changes. If you want to run Delta Sync cycle, the command will be start hyphen AD Sync Sync cycle hyphen policy type Delta. Delta synchronization will synchronize only the recent changes. For example, if you have created a new object or you have modified attributes of an object, then we should run Delta Sync. Because Delta Sync will synchronize the recent changes that are done within your on-premise Active Directory. And initial sync cycle is used when we make any changes within the filtering. For example, we have made changes within organizational unit-based filtering, or we have done domain-based filtering, or we have created a synchronization rule within synchronization rules editor. Initial sync cycle is called full cycle as well, or full sync cycle as well. So when you run initial sync, it checks all the objects of your on-premise active directory and it synchronizes the objects to Azure Active Directory as for the filtering that is done within Azure AD Connect. If you want to run initial sync cycle, the command will remain same, start hyphen AD sync sync cycle hyphen policy type, and then you will type initial. This way you can run initial sync cycle. So we have created a user, so let's run Delta sync cycle. Now let's go to synchronization service manager and let's understand the sync cycles. So here you can see the first sync cycle is Delta import and this sync cycle is for local active directory. After that, we can see the import sync cycle for AAD, which is for Azure active directory. Then we can see the Delta synchronization process, which is for Metaverse. This is for active directory and the Delta synchronization for Azure Active Directory. Then we can see the export sync cycle for Azure Active Directory and the export sync cycle for local Active Directory. So if we click on Delta import for local Active Directory, here we can see adds and one. 
if we click on this, we can see the synced user one has been picked from Active Directory. During import cycle for on-premise Active Directory, the objects are picked from Active Directory and those objects are sent to Metaverse. So here synced user one has been picked. And if we go to synchronization, we can see one object has been projected within Metaverse. This is the same user which is synced user one. Similarly, if we go to export Azure Active Directory, we can see adds one. That means one object has been added to Azure Active Directory. If we double click on this, we can see synced user one object has been exported. So the import sync cycle. Import sync cycle will pick the objects from on premise Active Directory and export sync cycle will export the objects to Azure Active Directory. In the same way, if you are writing back certain attributes or you are writing back groups from Office 365 to on-premise. In that case, within export for local Active Directory, you will see those objects here. So now if I go to Office 365 portal and if I go to active users, I should be able to see synced one user. So here we can see synced one user has been synchronized to Office 365. And if we want to check the synced status of this user, it says synced from on premise. In the first video of this series, I have discussed there are two types of identities. One is cloud hosted and one is synchronized. If your users or objects are synchronized from on premise Active Directory to Azure Active Directory, these objects are called synchronized identities. If you have created an object in Office 365, these identities are called in cloud identities or cloud hosted identities. So from here you can see which object is getting synchronized from your Active Directory and which objects are created within Office 365. In the same way, if I go to Azure Active Directory and if I click refresh, let's look for synced user one. Here we can see synced user one is showing directory synced. Yes, that means this object is getting synchronized from Active Directory, from your on premise Active Directory. Let's go back to Synchronization Service Manager and let me show you the connector space. Right click on any connector, either on on premise Active Directory connector or Azure Active Directory connector and go to search connector space. Click on search. Here you will see the objects that are getting synchronized from your Active Directory and those objects are picked from Active Directory and are placed within connector space. First, you will see your domain name testlabs.local, which is your Active Directory domain. Then you will see the OUs, the organizational units from where your objects are getting synced. My objects are getting synced from synced users OU and the sub OU is test OU. Let me show you. Synced users OU is the OU and test OU is the sub OU. So the user accounts are getting synchronized only from test OU and the same can be verified from connector space. This is your domain. This is the OU synced users and test OU is the sub OU. And these are the users. Those are getting synchronized from my OU. From here you can verify there are four users. So this is how you can check connector space. If you want to check connector space for Azure Active Directory connector, similar same way you can check this as well. If you will double click on the user, you can see the user accounts. Now you can come across scenarios where you have to delete the connector space. Before you delete a connector space, you need to disable sync scheduler. I will be discussing sync scheduler in detail in the next session. To disable sync scheduler, the command is set hyphen ad sync 
scheduler hyphen sync cycle enabled dollar false press enter once it is disabled after that we would be able to delete the connector space if you will try to delete connector space without disabling sync cycle you will receive an error so let's go back to synchronization service manager right click on connector and click on delete on this particular screen you will see two options delete connector space only and delete connector and connector space if you select this option and click ok this will this will delete this connector and it will delete its connector space as well if you want to delete only connector space then select delete connector space only and then click ok and click yes and this will delete the connector space so the replica of the objects that was created within this connector space has been deleted let's verify click on search now we can see there are no results retrieved same way you can delete the connector space for azure active directory connector as well click on delete select delete connector space only and then click ok and then click yes and this connector space has been deleted let's verify search connector space search there is nothing within the connector space so this is how you can verify the connector space the other component of azure ad connect that i'm going to discuss is metaverse within metaverse you can see the object that has been picked from active directory and the object that is going to be exported to azure active directory if you click on search you can check the users that are that are going to be synchronized if you want to check for a particular user, you can click on add clause. From here, you can select any attribute on the basis of you want to run this search. For example, display name. Let's select display name attribute. And here you will type the display name of that particular user. For example, user two. Click on search. Double click on the result. Go to connectors. Here you will see two connectors, one for local Active Directory and the other one is for Azure Active Directory. Local Active Directory connector will show you whether this object has been picked from on-premise Active Directory or not. And Azure Active Directory connector will show you whether this object has been exported to Azure Active Directory or not. So let's create one group and then we will add a member within this group and we will synchronize this group to Office 365. So let's assign a name for this particular group. And the name will be distribution group. One. Let's create a distribution group. OK. Let's give it an email address. For example, dg at testlabs.local. Apply. OK and let's add a member let's go to members click on add add the user here okay and let's go back to powershell and let's run delta sync now let's go back to synchronization service manager and here if we click on delta import for active directory we can see adds one let's click on this here we can see distribution group one has been picked from Active Directory. Let's wait for a few seconds and then we will check export cycle for Azure Active Directory. This is still in progress. So here on export cycle for Azure Active Directory, we can see adds one. Let's click on this and let's verify. So the distribution group one is exported to Azure Active Directory. Let's go to Office 365 portal and let's verify the changes. Let's go to groups, active groups. We can see distribution group has been exported and this group is getting synchronized from on-premise Active Directory. Now let's click on this group. 
Now, in the first session of this series, I have discussed if your objects are getting synchronized from on-premise Active Directory, all the changes will be done from Active Directory. If an object is synchronized to Azure Active Directory, you will not be able to make any change from Office 365. If you want to modify any attribute for that particular object, all these changes will be done from on-premise Active Directory. And same can be verified from here. It says you can only manage this group in your on-premise environment. And let's click on members and let's verify. We can see the user two has been added as a member within this distribution group. So this is how you can create users or objects within your Active Directory. And you can synchronize those objects from on-premise Active Directory to Office 365. In the next video, I will be discussing what is Azure AD Connect Sync Scheduler, what Sync Scheduler do. I will be showing you how we can access Sync Scheduler using PowerShell command. I will be explaining all the attributes of Scheduler, and I will be showing you practically how to modify Sync Scheduler attributes. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions related to the topics that I'm posting, feel free to write in comments. I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.